Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Renu Tyagi from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today I am going to speak about the module needs and their management among the aged under the paper Biosocial Gerontology. The learning objectives of the module are number one is to understand about the different framework defining the aging. Number two is the problems which are faced by the elderly people. Number three is the need of the aged and how to manage those needs. First of all, let's discuss about the basic concept of the aging. In primitive cultures, when joint family system was the custom, old and the young combine their wisdom and strength to guide and continue family. Aged individuals were looked after and provided nursing care. However, in the contemporary times, the changes is quite apparent. Forces of the commercialization, industrialization and modernization have traditional institutions and values have lost the silence thereby adversely affecting the situation of elderly. Older persons occupy an important place in the society. Their lifelong accumulation of the knowledge and experience helps them in making a profound impact over future generations. They act as a binding force in the society. During the prime of their lives, they had built their family bit by bit and as they reach their evening of the lives, they cling to the stay at uh, amidst of the family the elderly built. However, the changes in the social structures have been so radical that it leaves the aged at a vulnerable situation. Now let's see what is aging. The term aging implies a process. It commences from the embryo and continues until the death. It does not imply a life that is sick and spent instead. It represents the specific phases within the life cycle of a human being. So the course of aging may be divided into the five distinctive stages. These stages are the childhood, adolescence, youth, middle age and old age. All of which are biologically normal, continuing and inevitable. The concept of aging is somewhat complicating. It has different frame of the reference which may be social, psychological, temporal and cultural besides the chronological. The science of aging is called as gerontology. It came into being towards the end of the first half of the 20th century. Giron means the old man in the Greek world. To an ordinary person, an aged is the one with a range of changes and conditions like greying of the hair, stooping gait, wrinkling of the skin, retirement and superannuation by society, etc. Gerontologist, however, views the phenomena from three main perspectives, with number one, physiological or biological, number two, psychological and sociocultural perspective. Some gerontologists are of the opinion that aging is a state of mind. This is characterized by a rapid decline in mental and the emotional health and is called old age or senility. It is sometimes considered as a change in the behavior of the organisms which comes about with the increase in the chronological age that further leads to fall in the fitness for the survival. With regard to the sociological and the cultural perspective, there is only difference based on the emphasis. The sociological perspective lays emphasis more on the changes that occurs in one's behavioral which surfaces with age. Now let's see aged and their problems and needs. In older times, the number of the aged was small. Now with the advancement of the medical and the social sciences, access to the medicines, social security measures and social welfare have resulted in rise in the life expectancy, thereby resulting in an increase in the population of the aged. The World Health Organization 
the WHO paper titled Aging in India stated that the UNO defines a country as the aging where the proportion of the people over 60 years reaches 7%. According to their definition, India qualifies as an aging country as about 7.7% of the population of India is aged as per the population census 2011. The population of the aged is rising throughout the world due to which concerns and the care for them have attracted global attention of the social scientists and government in this age of the modernization, commercialization and industrialization with the breaking of the joint family systems to be replaced by the nuclear family system, the aged has become all the more vulnerable. Therefore, they need the support of the society, government and the most importantly their family for a happy aging. However, the aged are not homogeneous group. Their problems and the needs and their management vary according to their society, culture, age, health, financial status, etc. Some of the problem of the aged are number one is physical problems. These are the disabilities and the chronic illnesses coupled with the lack of the nursing and the medical facilities. Number two is the economical problems which include the lack of the resources, employment or the income. Number three, some problems are due to the refusal to be maintained by the children and being forced to sell property or forced to make the amendment in the will. Number fourth can be psychological problems, which includes the emptiness, alienation, loneliness, sense of loss, etc. And next category can be emotional problems. This arises as a result of being away from the children and devoid of the interaction with the peer group. The another set of problems can be classified as the social problems. Due to the loss of the job, spouse, group, relationship or social status, such problem arises. The next set of the problems can be identified as the problem of the physical violence, depression, abuse, depression and anxiety of being bullied or pressurized. The needs of the aged and their management include the social security needs, financial need, physiological or the health needs, spiritual needs, etc. Social security like the International Labour Organization has defined social security as the protection which society provides for its members through a series of public measures to prevent the social and economic distress that would otherwise be caused by the stoppage or substantial reduction in the earnings resulting from the sickness, maternity employment, injury, unemployment, invalidity, old age and death, the provision of the medical care and the provision of the subsidies for the families and children. The United Nations Declaration of the Human Rights in 1948 recognized social security is a basic human right. The right to the life recognized as the fundamental right by Article 21 of the Indian Constitution means that the right to live with the human dignity. It incorporated not only the security regarding the basic human needs of food, clothing and shelter but also the health security. Social security schemes usually give priority to the income security because usually the basic need of the vulnerable section may be the satisfaction if people have an adequate income. Due to their inability to work and earn, most of the elderly become vulnerable and can be mitigated by making a specific provision if one has an adequate income. When people and the families of the elderly are unable due to the various factors to make the arrangements for their case of the elderly, their needs must be provided for by the society or the states either in the cash or in the kind in primitive communities, family and adult children 
took the responsibility of looking after the elderly and were considered to be at the reliable source for providing the old age security. But due to the increased longevity of the elderly and other widespread demographic and socio-economic or cultural changes taking place in these transitional societies as a result of the industrialization, commercialization and modernization, these traditional source of old age security have come under great strain and gradually dwindling. The younger member of the households are gradually migrating to the cities, even to the other states and as a result of the globalization to other countries result in the old people being left behind in many villages. With rising aspirations, individualistic attitude of the youth and the rapid change in their lifestyle, it has resulted in the widening the generation gap. In urban areas, more and more women take up jobs and they cannot play their traditional role as the caregiver for the elderly. Poor families, even those that wish to abide by the tradition of the adult children taking to care for their parents, increasingly find it difficult to provide the necessary care due to their scarce resources, small houses and high cost of living. It is clear that in countries like India, where there is a large concentration of the elderly, there are needs for a multi-pillar system of the social security for the elderly, like number one, public funded, both central and the state government, social assistance programs for the poorest of the poor, especially those who cannot contribute to a partial contributory social insurance program that is supplemented by a social assistance component funded out of the public resources for the marginally poor individual. A fully instrumental social insurance programs with a firm link between the contributions and benefits for the organized sector. After making these provisions, there will remain a small number of the elderly who can make their own arrangements for the old age and will not need a formal social security management. Financial economic needs. Let's understand the financial economic needs. Most senior citizens have lower income than most below 65 years age groups. There is a lack of financial resources which makes them more vulnerable to the ill health due to the inadequate nutrition. It also makes access to the uninsured health care such as the home nursing and medications to the event of the sickness more difficult. Some studies have suggested that seniors with the low income are facing more physical and the mental health problems than those with the financial and educational resources. It was also observed that in the health problems began to appear much earlier in those elderly with the lower education. If the elderly is getting the pension, he has got some security. Even then, they get to learn to manage with the little amount of sum one is not getting the salary they will need to hunt for the other resources. There are a number of schemes in different countries for the elderly providing more financial security to them. Past retirement, the senior citizens who were working in the organized sectors could avail the benefit under various acts such as the Employment Provident Fund Act 1952, Family Pension Scheme 1971, Payment of the Gratuity Act 1972, Deposits Linked Insurance Schemes 1976, Group Insurance and General Provident Fund Schemes 1982, and finally, the National Pension Scheme 2004. 
There are several schemes available on non-contributory basis such as the pension programs, pension clearance, relief, unused leave, encashment on retirement and gratuity whereas the contributory schemes includes the group insurance contributory provident fund and general provident fund. In India, several studies have found that 40 to 45 million individuals or about 10% of the working population mandatorily contributed to the pension and retirement saving schemes for the formal sector workers and a third of these contribute to the employment provident fund or employment pension schemes or both. The government of India and several state governments have launched the subsidized insurance schemes through the Life Insurance Corporation of India LIC and the General Insurance Corporation of India through different policies such as the G1 Akshay for the self-employed endowment plans which are saving linked insurance plans like the Jeevan Mitra policy, money back policy that are designed to provide old age security through lump sum benefit over the periodic intervals. For example, Jeevan Dhara, Jeevan Suraksha, Jeevan Arogya, etc. There are some physiological and the health needs. Gerontology include a set of the conditions specifically associated with the old age. The occurrence of the such conditions such as the falls, cognitive impairment, vision impairment, hearing impairment, delirium, dizziness and frailty is increasing. With no social security structure in place and with inadequate facilities in healthcare, rehabilitation and recreation, the aged is staring at a bleak present and future in least developed countries or developing countries like India where the social structure is undergoing the profound changes, shortage of the geriatric care is compounding the situation of the aged in most developing countries. The most common geriatric condition is associated with the old age are hearing impairment followed by the vision impairment. Besides these geriatric conditions seen specifically in these population, the average elder in most developing countries including India suffers from dual set of the conditions. Communicable infectious and non-communicable conditions. Physiological changes due to aging as well as a drop in the immunity leads to an increase in the communicable diseases. A large number of the infectious cases in the government health sector are in the geriatric age groups. In addition, with the increase in the age, the cardiovascular diseases are also found to increase. Diabetes, hypertension and heart diseases are not uncommon condition seen in the age group of elderly. More and more elderly find themselves to be suffering from these chronic debilitating disorders as one gets older. An increasingly rising aged population also sickly from the chronic illness puts an astonishing amount of the burden on already stretched healthcare system. The key focus of the medical sciences is not to fix the health where it is broken but to start the health condition much earlier so that diseases can be prevented and overall sense of the well-being prevails. With increasing age, the most aged individuals suffer from the increasing social loss or social disengagement. The elementary intentions of the gerontologies is to open the outlook of the different dimensions of the aged life with the intention of bringing out 
alteration in its numerous aspects and also to make them more happy and adjusted in advanced ages. So that we also enjoy the presence of them in our life situations. But the situation is totally contrary with the increase of the societal tendencies among the elderly in India. The chief cause for this could be the psychological pressure, neglect, depression, frustration or failure of having the quality of life. Geriatric care need to be taken for more seriously as a public health issue because for any country with increasing aged population, secondary and tertiary care are a priorities. In such a scenario, an important step the government needs to take is to pump in the money and resources into public health care delivery. Now let's see the spirituality needs. In the contemporary society, there is a growing number of elderly which are not able to care for themselves any longer and thus decides by themselves or in some cases, others may have decided for them to live in the sheltered housing state like the residential homes, assisted accommodation or resident nursing homes. However, it is evident from several studies that there is a need to care not only for these physical health issues but also for their psychosocial aspects. Very old individuals living alone are often depressed. The risk factors include living in the distance from the family and low satisfaction with the living, housing and the financial conditions. The spiritual requirements do not necessarily refer to the religious issues only and they are not exclusively existential all the more. Theoretically, it may be appropriate to distinguish the psychosocial, existential and the religious needs, yet it is not practicable to separate these interrelated needs. Besides, a particular need may have a religious connotation for one individual and may have a clear existential connotation for a religious person. Additionally, it depends on the individual attitude and convictions, the underlying world view and the specific cultural context in order to determine whether or not the interpretation is a spiritual one. There are four interrelated extent of the spiritual needs that are connections, peace, meaningfulness, purpose and the transcendence and correspond to the underlying categories social, emotional, existential and religious. Various researches have verified that patient with the threatening and or chronic diseases regard their spirituality as a beneficial resource to cope and thus acknowledging and supporting their spirituality are a main issue of the spiritual care. In most studies, it was found that elderly wishes to plunge into beauty of a nature was expressed highest also the needs to feel connected with family, to turn to someone in a loving attitude and to reflect the previous life were of strong relevance. Their wishes can be interpreted as the intention to reconnect with the environment nature, with others and with own life. Also the intention to pass own life experiences to others, to give away something and to solace someone can be seen in this light. They could point towards finding the inner peace. Now let's summarize what we have learned so far from this module. The social structure is the fast changing with the joint family structure giving way to the nuclear family system, the elderly are increasingly becoming vulnerable. Those few who managed for a pension 
are also starting to face the some issues as those without such social securities due to the rising prices. Besides the emotional and the psychosocial issues are causing the equal harm to the aged. Though the government, non-government organizations are working towards filling some of the void in their life, the elderly nothing can replace the family. The need of the elderly will rise with the increasing aged population, so it is high time for all the stakeholders to come forth and support and nurture the care for the aged. Thank you.